Hey, welcome to Life in the Leadership Lane. I'm your host, Bruce Waller, where I get to talk to leaders that are making a difference in the workplace and in our community. What did they do to get started? And what are they doing to stay there? And oh my goodness, are you in for a treat? As we are already in summer of 2024, and I'm bringing you another special guest. Today, I'm getting to talk to Kimberly Shapiro. Kimberly is an executive recruiter and co-founder of the Executive Movement, which is an executive search firm. She's also host of the Executive Movement podcast. I got to be a part of that not too long ago. Kimberly, it's so good to have you on the show. How are you doing? I'm great. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. You are full of energy. I, and I, Before we get started, I always like to reflect with all of my guests. Some of them mm-hmm. I have met, some of them I hadn't met, but there was a time that I can go back to that moment when I when they came into my path. And for you, I, I want to ask you if you remember this. Uh, yeah. I believe it was a Starbucks. We met for coffee. I had mm-hmm. uh, written Find Your Lane. I just published mm-hmm. the book and we met and just had an incredible conversation uh, I think it was in Plano. Do you remember it that? Was. It was in Plano. It was a Starbucks. Um, and it was an amazing conversation. <laughs> it was as though we had known each other forever. And it was the first time we'd ever met. I remember us walking right? away. Going, I believe it was the first time. Or had we met? Yes, we, it was the first time. And, and we might have cross paths within right. some of the social you know, circles at Dallas HR, some of the other right. groups. but. That was the moment I remember thinking, this is somebody I want to know and I want to follow. Aww. And I'm, and I've been following you ever since. And then oh, I got to be part then. of a podcast. You were a host. Of, of course, today yeah. you're a host of the Executive Movement podcast. But before you were uh, a co-host with April Melton on yes. the, uh, I think it's a big girl. Big girl pants podcast. That's and it's what it was. still out there, y'all. So That's go check great. it out. It's She has yeah. wonderful, wonderful topics on health and wellness and women and yeah. Just it's a good podcast. Go check it out. I was a part of it for about four years, and then yeah. uh, let her I let her carry the torch. Yeah, and, and Seth uh, McCauley and I yes, got to be yes. on the podcast. That was so and much I fun. Still oh am my in goodness! Touch with him. Yeah, I loved it. I loved reflect. Hey, before we kind of get into it, I, I want to ask you if you would mind sharing a brief highlight of your organization, the Executive sure. Movement. For those who've never heard of TEM, uh, share yeah. a, a brief highlight of uh, how you serve your customers. Well, thank you. I appreciate you giving the opportunity to do that. And I will say there's probably a lot of people who don't know who we are because we just launched last year. So we are one year and four months in business, which I'm very, very proud of. Uh, We are an executive search firm. We specialize in C-level talent and accounting and finance. And the reason I throw accounting, it it feels kind of like, okay, wait, is it C-level or is it accounting and finance? Mm -hmm. It's both. And it's because I've been doing accounting and finance forever. And Mm. once upon a time, I was an accountant. So um, couldn't abandon my roots, right? <laughs> so we are, uh, that's, we have the, obviously the search. Mm. Uh, we, uh, when you ask, what do we do to serve our clients? Mm. I look at myself as kind of a, a management consultant for talent acquisition. Mm. I'm not like a traditional, just a recruiter well, mm. where, you know, you go and find talent and you, you know, screen them quick and then you, you punt them over, which is kind of what a lot of the, the market does. Um, we go pretty deep and I can be pretty real with my clients. I, I tell them the tough stuff, you know, if they have a compensation range that doesn't align with what the market will, will provide. I'm very, very transparent, very honest about that. Some, some like to hear it, some don't, um, but I do like to get creative. So mm. if their budget is X and the market is not, not X, Mm. then we talk about, okay, but what can we do to find you, you know, outstanding skilled talent that you're going to be proud to have on your team. They're going to be proud to work within the walls of this organization. Mm. How do we make those two things um, meet? So Mm. um, in a nutshell, that is us. We also have, of course, the podcast, and then we have an executive networking group that meets uh, Mm. on the second Friday of every month in Frisco, mm. Texas. Mm. Um, and that's been uh, in existence since September of last year. That's fantastic. And I'm going yeah. to put the links in the show notes for those who are listening that want to learn more about uh, whether it's about the organization or about the networking yeah. or the podcast. There's so Any of much. It. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is fantastic. Uh, and yeah, so I'll put the you. links in the show notes and people can reach out when the uh, when the opportunity presents itself. So l- let's talk about the Kimberly Shapiro story. Like, that's, <laughs> I, like I know you, but I know there's probably some things that I don't know about you. Where did you yeah. grow up and how in the world did you get into recruiting and leadership and, and all things 
Well, when I was five years old, I went to my parents and I said, I want to be a recruiter when I grow up. (laughs) No, that did not happen. Um, How did I get into this business? So, um, well, let me start with where where I grew up. Mm. I lived in eight states before I was 19 years old. Mm. I was born and kind of raised in Louisiana, left Mm. there when I was 10. So I'm going to go in order. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Louisiana, Alabama, Idaho, Oklahoma, Iowa, uh, South Dakota, Kansas, and Texas. Whoa. <laughs> I know. I right? love that. We're going to have why... trivia after the program. I know. It's why I'm so shy, you know, wow. because I had to learn how to mm. acclimate quickly and make friends. Yeah. And um, it, it is actually good, you know, for anyone listening right now, and you're in a transition type uh, situation where you might be relocating your family. And this is what I would speak to you too, because this is the mm. business that you're in, Bruce. Sure. Talking to these families, that's heavy stuff, right? When they have to uproot and relocate and they've got children, Mm -hmm. your kids will be fine. They will absolutely be (laughs) fine. I know it's a, it's a tough thing to hear for parents and it's a a tough thing for parents to put their kids through, Mm. but we will, they'll be fine. Um, so I graduated from high school in South Dakota, went to college in Iowa to Iowa state for a hot minute. And then Mm -hmm. I wound up in Texas and finished college here. Um, but here's a little nugget. Some people know about me and some people don't, Mm. and I'm not shy about it anymore. Hit it for a long time. I was a teen mom. So I had, uh, my daughter on the first day of my senior year in high school, uh, with my future husband. Um, and we, and both of my daughters, uh, long story short, by the time I was 23 years old, I was uh, married with two kids and divorced. <laughs> oh my so goodness. I had, I had checked quite a few boxes um, yes. before I was even, you know, before mm-hmm. the frontal lobe of my brain was even developed fully. Mm-hmm. So uh, I found myself in Texas at the age of 21 or 22. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time, I did not have a college degree. I hadn't finished it yet. I, ver- I didn't really have any skills to speak to, um, but I was a single mom and I had to get a job. So I found a, a job at Transamerica Real Estate Mm. Tax Service, working for an amazing man. His name was Sherm Gardner, saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself at the time. Mm. Uh, And so uh, just long story short, he was one of those really, really tough bosses, but everything was done with love. And he absolutely changed my life. He was the one that convinced me to go back to college. He was the one that, uh, you know, talked me into going or pursuing or entertaining the idea of accounting and finance. And Mm. he said, you're really analytical, like things just make sense to you so quickly. And Mm. so he said, you really need to consider, you know, uh, accounting. And he made a phone call to the CFO of Transamerica, downtown Dallas, and said, you need to hire this girl. Mm. So they had a fixed asset accountant role. And I went and interviewed and they gave me the job and I had zero experience, zero, none at all. Did not have my degree yet. Did not have any experience. And because Sherm was such a trusted advisor Mm. and peer in the organization, they gave me a shot. And Mm. I, and I also, I remember interviewing and saying, you know, what worst case here, like I've been (laughs) at this company for a couple of years or however long it had been worst case. I suck and you fire me. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Like worst case. (laughs) So, um, I didn't suck and I didn't get fired. So uh, yeah, that was kind of the beginning of my accounting and finance career, which lasted, I guess, about eight years, eight years yeah. or so. Yeah. And then I said, no, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I don't want to do spreadsheets all day long. Oh. So uh, then I went to, um, I, w- I ended my career uh, with an upscale jeweler, uh, really, really interesting, fascinating job. Uh, I had phone calls with some very uh, high profile individuals like Hollywood people. There is a fly y'all. So if you see me doing this, (laughs) I love that. If you're listening, you've got to watch the YouTube video. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) Sorry about that for those who are just listening, but um, yeah, so high profile clients, very interesting. Mm. Uh, You would know the names if I threw them out. Um, So I was there about five years and I just burn out. I hit a wall. Mm. I had two uh, young children and I was just, uh, I was tired, to be honest. I was working 65 hours a week, maybe sometimes more, and I was just tired. Mm. So I decided, my husband even said, why don't you just stay home? Be a Mm. stay-at-home mom. 
To which I said, yeah, of course, <laughs> that is, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I quit my job, took me six months to mm -hmm. leave. I mm -hmm. quit in January and I was, I think I was gone by June. Um, and then I stayed home and I, mm -hmm. I was three days in and actually I think it was the second day, not that it yeah. matters. Um, but I was sitting at a computer that was in my husband's office. So he had yeah. the office because he'd already worked from home and yeah. I had a little computer set up. Um, and I was sitting at the computer and he, I said, I'm going to go get a McDonald's coffee. $1 y'all $1. <laughs> and he said, that's not in the budget. You're not mm. working anymore. To mm. which I said, Oh, that's how this is going to go. I swung that chair around so fast. I got on my computer and I started looking for jobs in that mm. very moment. And I had that afternoon, I had an mm. uh, interview. This is back when things moved a little mm, quicker right. than they do now. <laughs> um, and yeah, I had an, an interview that afternoon with Robert Half International and mm. the rest is history. Mm. So I started with them uh, back in 2008, I believe. Mm. And I was, I was a natural. I just knew that that was my path. Mm. I fell into it by accident and it didn't take me two weeks to realize, mm. oh, wow, this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. So I loved it and I still do. And I've been in it now, I guess, 16 years Yeah. and, you know, kind of rose through the ranks, ended my, ended my career. Why did I say that? <laughs> ended my traditional corporate mm. career. How's right. that? Right. Um, as the COO of an organization uh, located in Plano, fabulous firm, um, fabulous people, but just decided I wanted to go do something on my own. Yeah. And so I launched, I, I launched a TEM and here we are. Yeah. What a great story. You know, yeah. isn't it so much easier to look back on your career and all of the, uh, the peaks and valleys and the curves and rather than looking ahead? Like you yeah. remember you, 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 you know, talk about, you know, being a, a team mom as a senior in high school and you're, you're just trying to figure things out. And you, then here you are. There are no plans at that moment. You're just yeah. surviving. I want to, I want to stop here just for a second. There's some people that are listening right now, I think. And I gave you a few questions before we started just to kind of keep us on track, but I didn't give you this question. Uh -oh. I, I'm curious. Uh, you said it took me a long time to tell this story. Mm -hmm. about your, uh, you, you know, having your children, getting a yeah. divorce and kind of getting back on track. What, what helped you tell that story? Because I think there's probably some people that are listening that want to tell their story, but they haven't been able to break through that. Yeah. I, I'm just curious, can you pinpoint maybe something that helped you or maybe share something with the listeners that might help them share their story? Yeah, sure. And, you know, I wish I could tell you the pivotal moment of why and how, I don't know that I know specifically, but I can tell you collectively, mm. I am an avid reader. Mm. I'm always reading enriched, like it, something that's going to enrich my life, mm. my mental health, things that are going to make me um, operate on a more mm. positive um, or in a more positive manner. Just I'm always trying to mind my mind, right? I'm always mm. trying to enrich my mind. And that started, I mean, way back with y'all, this is going to age me, Dr. Laura Schlesinger. <laughs> so I used to listen to her on the radio every single day, um, uh -huh. back when I was, you know, early twenties and just books, right. Reading books. Mm. And so there was a few, and I can't, I wish I knew I, you, you had asked me on our previous podcast, what some of my favorite books were. And I have, uh, I have that, but this, um, my favorite books don't really speak to me mm. learning this. And I'll tell mm. you what changed me. That was your question. I learned to love myself. Mm. I learned to look in the mirror and truly, truly be okay with where I had been, with the choices that I had made, where I was in that moment. So, mm. and it's still a practice that I make today that I, you know, I wake up, I, I have prayers posted in my bathroom that I read every single day. Mm. And they're not really, you know, for those who aren't, you know, religious or, mm. you know, they're spiritual and not, you know, whatever the, even if you're not anything, it's still good, a good practice to speak positivity into your life every mm. morning. Mm. So I look in the mirror and I, I, and it might sound a little corny to some people, but I'm just telling you, I say, I like you and I'm proud of you job well done. And I've mm. done that for years. I love and that. When you have a, 
story, a history that is um, not understood by a lot of people. Mm. And there's some judgment that's quickly passed, uh, warranted or not. You better learn real quick to like yourself mm. and be okay with who you are, because there's going to be a lot of people who don't understand your past, don't mm. get it, judge you because of it. And I just couldn't let that hold me back. Mm. So I books. Love that to wrap that all up. <laughs> I love that. I love all of that. I know there's probably somebody listening right now that is saying, I, I needed that today. And so yeah, there is another thing that is very, very important. And that has to remember that is no one's job to make you happy. Mm. So it's not your spouse's job to make you happy. It's not your kid's job to make you happy. It's not, you know, they're not put in your life to make you happy. Mm. You're there to make each other happy, sure. But if people are looking for their spouse or their boss or their job or their kids to yeah. fulfill something within them, it has to come from within first or none of those things are gonna, they're not gonna, mm. it's not gonna work. Mm. So I had to throw that out there real quick because um, that is equally important. It's nobody else's job. It's, it's your no job. It's nobody else's job. It's your job. Oh, my goodness. I have chills right now. <laughs> you are so inspiring, Kimberly. I've told you that before, but that is oh, so good. You. And I think that's so helpful for mm -hmm. people need to hear that. You know, you know, you were listening to Dr. Laura on the on the radio, <laughs> and now somebody's probably going to be listening yeah. to this on the podcast mm -hmm. and you're able to share and, and touch your life in some way. I, I love that. Hey, I do want to ask, I always like to ask when... You know, I wrote my book, uh, first book, Find Your Lane, and it's really about finding your purpose. Here you are, like you, like you were grinding, you, you were just grinding through the process for many years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And now here you are, you've had this great success. You're, you're launching this new company. Uh, was there a moment though, like you mentioned, I think you mentioned Robert Half when you said, Hey, I just, I knew I was going to be successful. What was that moment when, or were there moments when you found your lane? You said, I'm going to do this the rest of my career. Oh yeah. I mean, a moment, no, not necessarily, yeah. but you know, I can tell you what it was. Okay. Um, it was people looking to me for advice um, mm. on their career and, okay, how do I do this? What should I say here? How do I, you know, it was the how to and what do and, and me being able to successfully fill in the blanks and make a difference. Mm. When I started receiving cards and flowers and thank you notes, and I just thought, wow, I, I found it like this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to make a difference in people's lives. I even um, pursued a, a coaching certification so mm -hmm. that I could coach. And you know, what's so funny is I tried doing that uh, like as a business um, sort of like a side gig kind of thing. Sure. And it was so funny when people were paying me, I didn't like it as much, but when I was like doing my thing, like with what I do for a living, I'm like, it was just kind of by default part of the service. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mm. wanted everyone because in this industry, the client is the organization. It's the company that's hiring. That's the client. They're the ones that pay the bills, right? They're yeah. the ones that are paying the fees. Candidates are not the client. Mm. But I always wanted them to walk away with a positive experience. I wanted them to walk away feeling like, okay, thank you. You gave me like, even if I wasn't able to place them, um, because you're not going to place every single person that you talk to. That's right. the odds just don't align with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted everyone to feel like their time was well spent. Mm. And so they got something from me and it was that that mm. fed me. And mm. so when I went off and tried to do it as like a little side business, I'm like, this is, I don't, I don't want to do that. Mm. I just want this to be a helpful Helpful nuggets, mm, <laughs> helpful that. enrichments. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, that's great. I love that. Wait, well, let's talk. Let's talk leadership here. I mean, yeah. uh, you are leading your company today. When it, I always like to ask my guests, whenever I say, "Hey, Kimberly, what what's leadership to you?" What, how do you respond to that? Well, I think this is probably a little more common today than it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago. But I think today a leader is an accountability partner. I think they're a mentor mm. and I think they're a coach. Mm. You're not just a manager. Mm. Um, and I think, I think where companies, where organizations kind of miss the mark is everybody knows the Peter principle, at least I, I think most do. Um, and that is where you're a top performer, you're a high producer, whatever, you're great at your job. Mm. And so therefore you get promoted and you rise the ranks because you're good at what you do, but no one teaches you how to lead other people. You mm. just know how to lead yourself. 
Um, and so I think that's where there's a little bit of a disconnect within the walls of an organization, um, because you not only are you managing people, mm -hmm. sure, um, but at the end of the day, the, these people are spending more time with you than they yeah. are with their own families, oftentimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe not in a remote environment, but mm -hmm. if they're fully in the office or even sometimes hybrid, they're seeing your face mm -hmm. more than they're seeing their <laughs> families. And so it's important to remember one, that these are human beings. These mm -hmm. are people. Leaders need to look at their, their, uh, those that report directly to them that these are people, they have mm -hmm. children, they have lives outside of this organization. They have aging parents, perhaps they're, you know, responsible for taking care of, they have, who knows what it is. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but I think we have a tendency to forget that mm -hmm. and think that where they're working is everything. It should yeah. be everything. It should yeah. drive everything they do and be the most important thing in their lives. And that is unrealistic. Yeah. I, so. I love that. And I love how you said coach, because whenever I uh, think about some of my coaches, yeah, they were people that I had built relationships with that yeah. I'd spent a lot of time with. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're talking about. You're spending a lot of time with your employees, your team. Yeah. And, and, uh, I love how you frame that up. That's fantastic. Hey, well, well, let me, let me ask you this. Okay. Here, let's talk recruiting for a second. You, mm -hmm. you have been doing this for a long, long time, a long time. Talk about what, what's the landscape like right now? Cause a lot of times we hear, Hey, this is a, a candidate's market, or this is an employer's market or 2024. What, yeah. what kind of market are we in right now? And, and people that, uh, I don't know, cause I want to talk more about, uh, companies and what they're doing to try to attract talent, because we all sure. know when you attract great talent, great things happen. What's yeah. the landscape like? It's different. I, I you know, be full transparent, yeah. um, fully transparent. It It's different. Um, it's a little bit slower. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that companies aren't hiring. They're just mm -hmm. moving a little bit slower. They're a little reluctant. They're, yeah. I think they're uh, a little trepidatious. I think they just want to make sure that they're making the right hire um, and, you know, honestly, guys, in every single election year, mm. it always slows down. It has always. Nobody knows what's going to happen. You know, is the world going to implode if their particular candidate doesn't get in? Well, of course, it's going to implode. And then what's going to, you know, the world's going to end and our company's going to go out of business. <laughs> it's so silly. So um, things have a tendency to slow down in an election yeah. year. So um, just know that when you're applying is it a candidate market? Well, that is a tricky question. Um, it depends on what lane you're in. Oh boy. That's yeah. the old sales definition. It's, it depends. It, it depends. <laughs> if you're a senior accountant, you better yeah. believe it's a candidate market. Um, okay. Uh, in the accounting and finance lane specifically, there is um, a, a vast uh, skilled talent shortage. I think there was the CPA Society put out a thing last uh, year, a white paper last year stating that 33 or those sitting for the CPA exam was down 33% year over mm. year. I it The number is 33%. And if it's year over year, I can't remember exactly, but you Google it, you'll find it immediately. It's just, it's uh, astonishing um, the number of individuals who are no longer seeking um, accounting as a career. Mm. And even those that do. So you have recent grads that are coming out of school um, that are graduating with an accounting degree, they get in it and mm. they don't want to stay in it. Teachers, mm. you see the same thing. They get it and they're like, this is not worth <laughs> it. And say, you know, so they're like, see you later. Um, and then they go, you know, have their TikTok career. Just kidding. But, um, as far as, uh, the industry as a whole, I would not call it a candidate market mm. right now. Mm. Um, I, I, I would say it's moving a little slow, but I will say don't despair. Um, mm. you know, I, I feel there's nothing harder on the mindset. There's nothing harder on the psyche, nothing harder on a person <laughs> than mm. a job search. Mm. I mean, it might be tougher than a divorce because mm -hmm. it just, it makes you feel so low, right? When you mm. know you're a valued, um, individual, you're so proud of your career. You're so proud of your credentials, rightfully so. And you start applying for these jobs and you know, everyone's going to be trying to, you know, oh my gosh, did you, Hey, did they're going to be talking in the walls as soon as they see your resume. They're like, did you see this guy? He's mm. amazing. Well, that doesn't happen. Right. And then mm. you get the declination or like the, sorry, you know, we're not moving forward with your resume and it just hits mm. hard. 
So um, you really got to protect your mind um, mm. during that whole process. And that's what I would say to people is if you're in transition and you don't have employment right now um, and you're out there applying to all of the positions and you're, you know, you're one month in, two months in, six months in, mm. whatever it is, you have got to be doing something mm. to feed your brain positivity. Like, I don't care if it's a book, if it's a podcast, if it's a a, a happy movie that's just going to mm -hmm. make you smile throughout something. Um, if you are listening to the news all day long, um, you know, in your ear pods and, and you're listening to the, I call it chirping, you know, where they're going back and forth on their opinions and that's what you're putting in your brain every day. And then you turn on the TV and you watch reality TV shows with women yelling at each other. Yep. I'm talking about housewives. If that is what you're doing, um, you got to stop. Mm. It's unhealthy. Mm. And if you don't think when you walk into an interview, they can't feel that energy, they do. Mm. They can. So um, that I always have to make that plug because I think mindset is one of the most important aspects of job search mm -hmm. and that people just don't, they don't even think about. Mm. I, uh, I wrote down, mind your mind. You mind said that mind. earlier. Mm -hmm. And self-talk. Like mm -hmm. it's like it's, it's and we and I didn't think about it, you know, as we started the conversation and you kind of plugged those in there. And now as we talk about people that are in transition, that's more important than ever. And it's I love how the you most talked about thing. <laughs> you got to be and you got to be part of something. You have to always be looking forward to something. And something. that's why I'm glad you started this uh, network. I'll, again, I'll put the link in the show notes sure. for people to come and mm -hmm. be part of a group. Right. Yes. So it doesn't matter yeah. if it's your network or any network, they need to go be part of something. Right. That's right. right. And if there's any recruiters listening, you're welcome. Um, please come, please. Anyone who can help these individuals um, in any way, you know, whether mm. that's just a, a coffee uh, and a new connection or, you know, perhaps, you know, who knows what it could be. But I, I yeah. welcome um, recruiters and executives and you don't have to be in the accounting lane, just um, executives. So, so whenever you see companies though, that are, are, are going out trying to find that a player, are they, are you seeing any companies doing anything different than they did? I don't know, 10 years ago, are they, when, when it comes to benefits, trying to attract talent, yes. I mean, I'm in relocation. So yeah. I think relocation is probably one of those things that a lot of companies will offer in some way. What, what are, I don't know, maybe a benefit. Have you seen any change or has there been change? Um, I, you know, I think they were trying um, mm. in 2021. Mm. I think there was some spotlight on the flexible schedules. Everybody mm. was coming out of COVID yeah. lockdowns and everybody, you know, had kind of assembled to this new lifestyle of working remotely and everyone loved it for obvious reasons, not because they're lazy, but because they didn't have to sit in traffic for an hour each way. And, you know, they were more productive, a lot of people. So, um, I think companies were paying attention to that. Fast forward three years and a lot of that progress, I'm going to call mm -hmm. it, um, is being retracted. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of organizations that, and maybe it is due to productivity, you know, but I think there's ways to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're bringing individuals back into the office. Um, so what are companies doing? I'm going to actually say what I wish I'd stop seeing. <laughs> that is foosball tables and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Y'all listen, the newer generations that are coming into the workforce don't care. They mm. do not care. They mm. care about flexibility. Mm. Um, you know, there's, you look at our generation, Bruce, and mm. even, you know, baby boomer generation. Um, and I, I think you're Gen X, I'm not sure. Yes. Um, so our generations, we were a little bit, we're workaholics. Like we were married to our jobs and I am not saying that's a good thing. Um, but we also were striving for that American dream. We were striving to own our homes. We were striving to provide a better future for our children. We were, we were striving for something. There was a, mm -hmm. an attainable goal. And we taught ourselves if we work hard enough, we'll check those boxes, right? Well, I think the younger generations coming in, it's twofold. One, they watched us work ourselves to death. Mm. You know, my kids watched me lose my hair because I was so stressed out, have hives because I was so stressed out mm. and put that above my family, right? Mm. Even, even through me feeling so, I'll just say unhealthy, that trumped everything because that was my job and that's what you do. Yeah. Well, I think these newer generations paid attention to that. 
And I think they're saying, I want to invest in a, I want a career. I want to work hard. I want to do a good job. I want to be a part of something that's meaningful, Yeah. but I don't want to sell my soul to do it mm. so that there there's what's called boundaries and mm. balance for mm. them. Mm. Well, our generations are like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> boundaries, balance. <laughs> um, so I think that is shifting things a little bit. And so what we're doing as organizations to attract talent might not be speaking to the generations that are coming up as the newest talent to join the market. Mm. We might be still kind of speaking to the, maybe yeah. the older millennial or who is, by the way, now, you know, moving into the leadership roles, the Gen X um, generation. And, you know, these younger gen the generations, here's what they care about. Yeah. They care about time, their their own personal time. You know, I had a, a team in my previous uh, role. These were all Gen Z mm. and all, uh, I would say, the the millennial, but like at the tail end of millennial, right? Almost right. Gen Z. Okay. There's a misnomer that these guys don't want to work. They don't want to mm. work. That's not true. They do want to work. They yeah. absolutely do. Every single one of these individuals that I hired were hard workers, dedicated, invested. But at five o'clock, they were done. Mm. Period. They're just mm. done. They're not, they don't want to sit in the office until eight o'clock like I did. <laughs> they want to go home. They want to go be with their friends. They want to go be with their yeah. family. They want to, whatever their thing, they mm. want to go to the gym. Yeah. They want, these guys want to travel. So yeah. when I say time, I'm talking about, on a daily, weekly, and annual basis. Mm. They don't want to be in the office past five. They mm. don't want to work on the weekends. They want to have enough PTO to allow them to travel. Yeah. That is how you motivate. The, mm. And here's the other thing. They want feedback. Mm. So feedback. If, you don't, if you don't have a plan in place to provide these, uh, the newer generations, younger generations coming into the workforce, we just sat there and suffered in silence, right? Mm. Like, well, they didn't say <laughs> anything. So I guess I'm doing okay. Right. We're like, no news is good news. No. That's how we thought. That is not how they think uh, that's the, they sit there and if like, they mm. don't hear anything, then they don't like them, you mm. know, like, Oh, they don't like me. I must mm. not be doing a good job. It's, it's interesting. Um, and they crave, um, not just positive feedback. They, cr they criticize, not criticism. Um, they want to know how to do better. Yeah. They want to know where the gaps are so that they can do a better job. Coaching. This is my, this is my actual hands-on mm. coaching, mm. mentoring, coaching. They want training. They want people who are going to pour into them mm. and not just on a, here's how you do your job better, mm. but here's how you build a successful career. Mm. Here's how you become a leader. Even if mm. you're not one yet, like that's the kind of stuff they're craving. Mm. And if you have, if you can offer training, if you can offer consistent feedback, if you can offer them time mm. um, and pay them adequately at market, mm. you, you have a much better, um, rate of success or, you know, you'll, you'll have a better, uh, opportunity of retention and mm. attracting because mm. guess what they're going to do. They're going to talk to their friends. Hey guys, I'm working for the mm. most amazing company. Mm. You guys got to come here. Mm. So I love that. yeah, I just don't think it's the things that they think it is. Yeah, I always use the term, your customers are always your best salespeople. Well, your employees yeah. are always your best recruiters. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Referrals, that's the best place yeah. to find. And yeah. I think my team that I had, um, that I was just speaking to, um, I think the majority of them came from referrals. Yeah. So I, I think it's the best way to recruit. Now, don't put me out of business, but you know, at the same time. <laughs> this is so good. I wrote down, uh, you know, I, I was thinking as I wrote these, so I wrote down flexibility, feedback, coaching, mentoring. Yeah. And I was thinking about those things as you're talking here. And those are like, those are the little things. And I always talk about how little things lead to big things. And it, yeah. and I, I think many times we feel like as organizational leaders, we need to go get in this conference room and everybody try to come up with this big idea. We need this big campaign. We need to like in my business, right? We want to recruit drivers. We got to come up with, we need something big. We need to go give them yeah. big bonuses. We need to bring them in. And it's the little things. It's it the, the little, little things. things. And it's being consistent and doing those every day. Are we connecting with the people? Are we being, are we give? are we being flexible? Are we giving mm -hmm. them purpose? 
Like, yeah. are we helping them see? Oh my gosh. Right? That's In my huge. book, Drive with Purpose, that's what I was talking about. I was like, how can we help people make, like, see how they can yep. make impact, right? Success is one thing. Yeah, of course they want to be successful. Sure. They want impact. They really want impact. I'm so glad you hit on that. Hmm. One of the biggest things that um, the team that I was just speaking to or about, they would always talk about where are we, how are we going to give back? Yeah. Who are we going to serve? They wanted um, always for us to have some philanthropy, you know, some type of organization that we were partnering with to go and volunteer and yeah. not just a, we're showing up one day a year, yeah. like somebody that we're partnering with that is mm. meaningful, um, that we add value to because um, they wanted to enrich someone else's life. Mm. Um, and that is very, very important to Gen Z and, and I would even say millennials. So yeah. if, if that's not a part of your organization, mm. you're going to, you're going to struggle to attract these guys. Cause they want that. They want it. They want to be part yeah. of something bigger than them. And, and, and even uh, it's also important for us too, because when other people's people are inspired, whether they're mm -hmm. the Gen Z or Gen Y or it, we're inspired. Absolutely. Like we love seeing Absolutely. people inspired and then it like gets us motivated. We're like, okay, well, if we like this, let's go do more of that. Yeah. You know, and it just makes you just feel good all the way around. I love that. Oh my goodness. We could talk about this all day long. I love all of this. I want to ask you a little bit about your podcast, the sure. executive movement podcast. Like, yeah. so it's a new podcast. I want people to, I'm going to put the link to the show so people can sure, go out and check you. it out. I would love to know, like, why did you start that? Cause there's probably some people listening going, I've thought about starting a podcast. I wonder why she started her podcast or what her thoughts are around podcasts. It, yeah. Why did you start the podcast and what are you hoping to get out of it? Yeah. Well, thanks for asking that question. And I will start with saying, if you are considering starting a podcast, reach out to Bruce, reach out to myself, <laughs> We can tell you how to do it, but also just do it. Hmm. You do not have to have it perfect. And it's really yeah. kind of fun once you get it going to yeah. listen to the first episode and then the most recent and you're like, oh, okay, wow, less, so many lessons learned. Um, but the executive movement podcast, um, you know, Bruce, I just going back to why I love recruiting and hmm. that whole coaching aspect and helping people. And if I was able to give somebody just one little nugget mm. that changed their, you know, oh, I'm not even gonna say life, just their day. Maybe it mm. just, they're like, oh my gosh, no one's ever told me that before. Mm. Thank you so much. That is it in a nutshell. If I could bottle yeah. up why I want to have this podcast, it's that. Yeah. If I can have people on like you, um, like others who are making a difference in the lives of other people, and you share in a platform that reaches many, right, all at one time, ongoing, why not do that? Mm. So it's all about enriching lives and careers. Mm. It's all about inspiring people. It's all about education. Um, you know, it's, it really, it doesn't have anything to do with the business personally. So mm. it's not like trying to gain, you know, did I do it for content? The content's not going to really align. Not right. this topic. Sure. Sure. Um, of course. Our conversations. Sure. Um, but it, that's not going to be the theme. The yeah. theme is just uh, enriching lives, inspiring people, educating them, mm -hmm. and hopefully they get walk away with something. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad you shared that because I I named my show Life in the Leadership Lane. I didn't want to call it like because I think anybody can be a leader. Yeah, I didn't call it life in the recruiter lane or life in the HR lane or life in the relocation <laughs> lane, right. it's just life in the leadership lane. Let's just That's talk right. leadership because everything rises and falls on that. I do want to hit on one thing that you, you, you mentioned here real quick. And I think this is really important. I was interviewing Adrienne court. She's a CHRO for an organization. And she said something on the show early on season one. And she said, it's all about OTL. And she said, OTL stands for over the line. And she said, what happens is many people try to get things perfect before they start yes. and they never start. Yeah. But if you will just get it 85% there and go, you yeah. can change the wheels and do the maintenance, all that all yep. along crossing that finish line. And when I, yes, you're right. If you listen to my first podcast, oh my goodness, <laughs> I didn't yeah, have a same. mic. I didn't Same. even have the name of the show. I just started. So I love that. I love that advice because I think that's important. And like in any aspect, whether it's a podcast Anything. or starting Anything. your journey for transition, whatever it is, you just got to go, right? And podcasting can be sort of therapy, you know, because mm. you're you're talking, you're sharing, yeah. you're, it, yeah. and so you're having meaningful conversations with yeah. people. 
and that's meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. enriching in your life and you walk away feeling like, wow, yeah. I just feel better. And I'll, and I'll say this uh, lastly on this, and that is knowing your why. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's important. You said you're here to enrich lives and, and uh, people's careers. And I think, you know, your why, like we're here to enrich people's souls. Yeah. And for me, I, it, yeah, same thing. Life and leadership lane. It's really to move leaders, to inspire and change the workplace. Right. If we can connect in some way and we can inspire. People are going to take that and literally get better and yeah. ultimately change the workplace. And I think that's, that's the, that's the key is if you're listening right now and you're like, Hey, I, I think I might want to do that. Know your why. And yeah. just go. And, and I think that's great. Hey, let me, uh, let me ask you this. What drives you? What drives me? <laughs> um, what motivates me? What drives me learning? Um, mm. I'm sort of a rabbit hole kind of girl. So mm. I'll read a book and it'll introduce another book and mm. then I will buy that book and that will take me down a rabbit hole. And so I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a goal, uh, what do I want to say? I'm goal oriented. So there's mm. always something I'm striving for yeah. always. Yeah. Um, most people in my life don't have any idea the 10 things on my list at any <laughs> given time. And there's always yeah. something always. Um, so I am goal oriented and whatever's on that list, it could uh. be personal. It could be spiritual. It could be career, mm. you know, something about my career. Mm. It could be something related to education and certification, but there's always something. And that drives me. So I wake up every single day knowing exactly why I'm mm. doing what I'm doing. I love that. Um, because there's, there's a, I'm a box checker, Bruce. I like, I gotta have <laughs> I things to, <laughs> to like I constantly go after. Right. I, love I, that. Uh, I bought this, uh, my kids and my old teammates thought it was so creepy. There's this like calendar and it's like all these mm. little boxes mm. that represent the weeks of your life. Mm. And when you pur purchase it, the weeks that, you know, that correspond to the week that you bought it are already filled in black. Mm. And then it gives you like the average age. And I think it goes to like, or I did mine to 105 because I'm going to mm. live to be 105. Okay. Okay. Decided. I love it. I love I've it. already decided. So <laughs> it, you know, it goes on and then it gives you all these blank boxes. And the goal is that you fill them in week by week to show you yeah. one, how much time you don't have left. And two, how much time you have left. Uh. And what are you going to do with it? Yeah. What are you doing every single day to change the trajectory of your life? Mm. Are you spending more time watching TV? Mm. Are you spending more time doing something meaningful? Mm. Are you giving back to the community? What are you doing? Yeah. And when you have a visual like that, yeah, it kind of smacks you in the face. And it's like, get up, get off mm. that sofa, turn that movie off mm. and go do something productive. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I am like, I am, I have chills here. That That is so good. I, uh, we need to get together for another coffee sometime yeah. because we need to go over our list. I read a book by Lou Holtz and he had talked about when he listed a hundred things he wanted to achieve. So I listed my hundred things. So I'm <laughs> oh right gosh, there with I'm you. I'm do like that. checking, I'm checking boxes. I love that. Oh I'm my goodness. Always checking boxes. Yeah. And in a nutshell, that is what motivates me. That's yeah. what gets, keeps me going is yeah. I've always got something else, you know, talking to people that are in transition or e anyone, anyone yeah. always have something going in your life outside yeah. of your career, have something, maybe it is your podcast. Maybe you're writing a book that you'll publish in 20 years. Who knows? Mm. Have something, some sort of passion that's just yours mm. so that if something does happen and you do find yourself, you know, looking, you're in the market, you're in transition, mm you've got something else that's feeding you while you're going, while you're looking. Yeah. I think yeah. that's important. And that goes back to mindset. Yeah. I love that. I think that's what gives you energy when you have something to look forward to. Absolutely. Okay. So before we shift over to this time to accelerate as, as we kind of wrap up the show, I, I do want to ask you this. You've given some incredible advice all day today. Uh, but was there ever any advice you received early on in your career or maybe with your family, any advice that, you just find yourself sharing with others. Yeah. You know, advice, two things that I was uh, shared that was shared with me when I was a young up and comer, as we'll call okay. it. One was dress for the job that you want, not mm. the job you have. Mm. I get it for anyone listening. They're like, but I work remote. I get it. I, I, I get it. But you're still on camera 
oftentimes, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just make sure that your presentation to the external world is um, putting you in the light that you want to be in. Um, even if you're a t-shirts and ball caps kind of environment, if you want to rise um, to a, you know, more senior level, I'm not saying wear a suit. That's not what I'm mm -hmm. saying. But, you know, maybe polish it up a little bit. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, instead of having a t-shirt with you know, stuff all over it. Um, maybe it's a solid white or black t-shirt. You know, I don't know. I'm just look at the, at the way that you're presenting yourself to the world. And does that align with your ultimate goals? One. Um, and then I had the other one on the tip of my tongue. Oh, this one isn't popular. Um, nor is the other one, but, uh, they worked for me and that is fake it till you make it. And I don't mean fake the job. Mm. I mean, fake the confidence. Because in the beginning, we don't always have the confidence to do the things that we want to do, stand up in front of a room and give a presentation so we don't sign up for the project, um, speak our mind at a conference room table because we don't feel like what we have to say adds value. Fake it. Mm -hmm. Pretend you have the confidence. If you have not watched Amy Cuddy's video, it's the number one TED Talk, I think, or it used to be anyway, um, on uh, presence and her book on presence. Uh, she is a, uh, I think she's like a, psychotherapist, I can't remember, but uh, mm -hmm. from Harvard. And she, uh, PhD, incredibly smart woman, and it's all science based. So this isn't just fluff. But she says, she says, fake it to become it. Mm. And I fully believe in that. And again, I'm going to say I'm not saying fake that you can do the job, mm. fake the confidence around your ability to do the job. Yeah. Yeah, because we just, especially women, we don't sign up for things because we don't have the confidence. We don't speak up because we don't have the confidence. We don't apply for a certain job because we don't mm. think we check all the boxes. So fake it until you make it. So good. Yeah. This is so, so good. I'm going to also put that link in the show notes for that TED Talk you mentioned on presence. Oh, yeah. People might so want to click that link and and, and uh, I'm, I want to, I don't know if I've seen that one before. Oh, so I want to definitely check that amazing. out. I think that's, that's such great advice. And I think, you know, and, and as you continue the journey, I think everything you've talked about today, you're an avid reader, you're, you know, listen to podcasts, you're just continuous learning. You're mm -hmm. in that mode all the time. And that's how you get that confidence. Hey, I want to shift to, uh, it's time to accelerate for the last part of the show. It's kind of okay. some, just some fun questions. I, I always, I do like to ask a question and you're an avid book reader. So I'm very yeah. interested in this. What's your favorite book and why? So I have three. I oh, couldn't just do okay. one. Okay. Um, and these just, I still read them. By over the way, and over. I'm taking notes here. I've got <laughs> two pages of notes. Okay. I love it. I love it. Number one is three, uh, think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh yeah. Y'all listen, this is not about getting rich. I know it sounds like, I think there's people who don't read that because they're like, I'm going to, that's silly. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's yeah. all about how, what's happening with your mind. Yeah. Um, and it, it's an incredible book. I'm very old. I think, well, very old. Yeah. It's relative. Um, but I think pick it up and give it a, give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it just teaches you how to think more than mm -hmm. anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, the second is boundaries. I mm -hmm. read that book years ago. It's Christian based. Um, but conceptually, one of the best, best books I ever read in my life, I was 26 years old when I read it. And I didn't know that I didn't have boundaries mm. until I read it. And then I thought, mm. oh my gosh, I don't have mm. boundaries with my family, mm. with anything. Um, mm. And so that really um, transformed my life. It also teaches you how to handle personalities that don't have boundaries. So it's not mm. just about teaching you to have them. It teaches you how to handle people that don't have them. Um, and the last one is change your thoughts, change mm. your life by Dr. Mm. Wayne Dyer, mm. D-Y-E-R. -D um, and you can see the theme here, right? It's mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah. Mindset. mindset. It's everything. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. This is so good. I will put the link in the show notes for those. So you can check those out. I have read those. I, I don't, uh, I don't, no, if I've read boundaries, so I'm gonna have to check that out. It's for great. Sure. I mean, and it's I, interesting how books come into your life at certain seasons that oh, have more right. impact than other times. And so, um, I, yeah, I definitely want to check that out. I forgot to mention the fourth, and that's Drive with Pur Purpose um, by Bruce Waller. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love mean, that. I have sticky notes all through that uh, book. It was uh, so chock full of goodness. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, what do you, uh, in my, uh, in, in one of my books, I talked about great leaders or grateful leaders. What, what are you grateful for? You know, it sounds so cliche. And so I'm almost, I hate to say it, but I have lived a charmed life. 
It's just mm. been easy. So, um, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with my mind because um, everything, you know, I just, I just look at things differently, but mm -hmm. my family, um, I have the most amazing family that we all live kind of close together and we spend a lot of time together. I'm grateful for my love of reading because it has absolutely changed mm -hmm. my life. And I am grateful for all of the people who have come into my life at key mm -hmm. moments that have changed my world. Mm -hmm. So I know it sounds a little cliche and a little vague, but that's it. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for you for coming on the show today and sharing some perspective i think there's going to be a lot of movement uh from this show hey let me ask you this question i got two questions uh left uh, what energizes you like when you're not like working or maybe it is when you're working happy people mm. i just love happy people when i'm around someone who's loving life i feel <laughs> it and i i just it just makes me feel complete, right? Mm. I can tell you what will zap my energy faster than anything else um, <laughs> is being around people that are a little ho-hum. They're not, you know, they're just not loving life and you can feel it and it's a little heavy. And I'm like, oh, I got to, I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. I love that. Hey, well, this is my final question. Kimberly, 10 years older. Yeah. She's around your corner, knocking at your door and you're going to answer that door. What's she going to say to you? 10 years ago, I would say, do the things that scare you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get, look, mm -hmm. Make a list of all the things you're afraid of and start there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about bungee jumping, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm talking about, mm -hmm. you know, something with your career. Is there an education? Is there a certification you want to get, but you just don't, you mm -hmm. can't, you don't have the time or you just afraid, whatever it is, make a list of the things that scare you. Like I, if you, if you're an accountant, I want to be a CFO, but oof, I don't, oh, that's really scary. Or I want to yeah. move. I want to move. I want to get out of, you know, I've lived in the same place for my entire life and I just want to do something different or I want to travel internationally, but boy, that sounds scary because mm. of all the things happening in the world, make a list of the things that scare you and start there Yeah, because it, it transforms everything else in your life. Mm. When you start to check those boxes and you start to like, Okay, I did that, did that, mm. did that. Oh, and I survived. <laughs> Somehow everything just starts to align thereafter. Oh my goodness. That's a 10 years wiser, Kimberly Shapiro. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and just golly, sharing your wisdom and your perspective. I know, again, I know the listeners are going to get a lot out of this show. Hey, for someone that heard something that you shared today on executive search or just in <laughs> accounting and finance, the podcast, the, 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 the group that meets together, whatever it is, if they heard yeah. something like, Hey, I want to, I want to connect with Kimberly. How's the best way for them to connect? LinkedIn is honestly the best way. Mm. Um, and my contact information is there. I'm okay. not private about that. I yep. put it everywhere. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. And then obviously links to website and all of that are right there on my page. Perfect. I will yeah. put that in the, in the notes in the, in the, uh, in the show notes. And uh, man, I cannot wait to see what's ahead for you yes. and your team and the executive movement and all the people that you touch uh, ahead. And so thank you so much again for coming on the show. And most importantly, thanks for your friendship. Uh, and thank you, Bruce. Thanks for asking me to be here. Thank you for your friendship. I'm so happy we stayed connected all these years. Awesome. Hey, I can't wait to share this. I'll talk to you later. Okay, thanks.